The meeting of the Dudley Charlton Regional School Committee is now in session. It is Wednesday, January 24th. It's 6.30 p.m. We're at the Charlton Middle School and the first order of business is we're all going to stand and pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first order of business will be Mr. Sullivan, and you can come right up, Mr. Sullivan. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. He's really okay. Go for it. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Um, so uh, I think the purpose for me being here tonight is just to give you an overview of how the audit went. Uh, share with you like the, the hows, the wins, and why we do what we do. Also to share with you uh, the results of, of what I think were finan financial results that you should be aware of, and maybe give you a little bit of insight into the, the report and how it's laid out. The second thing, there's two other reports in here. One is called the CIFA report. I'm going to talk about that briefly, and then give you an update on the management letter. So we basically, what I wanted to uh, kind of talk about, at least to start off, was that one of the things that we need to have as an audit firm is have our clients ready for when we come in. We have to know that they, what I call, it, be our audit ready. That means reconciliations are done, uh, cash, cash information is readily available for us, AR information is readily available, fixed asset information is readily available. <coughs> and what I wanted to just start off with was by saying Richard and the, his team were audit ready. Um, we came in in the spring and we came in in, in, in October. Uh, we do spring stuff, and I'll share with you what we do then. And in October, we basically what I call walk down the balance sheet and do a lot of analytical stuff. And we ask questions. And what I appreciated from Rich's team was they exhibited a sense of urgency. The questions that we asked were answered timely, accurately. Um, there was no consternation on their part, which I wanted to share with you means that they're not just doing this for the audit. This is the, they got a system in place that means things are at their fingertips. So I'll just start off with that. Um, what we do, in the prelim, we basically try to do stuff that's not date sensitive to June 30th. For instance, we can't audit cash at June 30th because June 30th isn't there yet. But we can look at what we call transaction classes. We do expenditure transactions, we do revenue transactions, we do payroll transactions. And the design of these um, uh, tests are not to determine if the audit controls are really solid, but it's to basically see is the design okay looking for authoriza proper authorization, proper documentation, proper posting to the general ledger of the particular account. Um, all that testing went fine. We didn't have any issues with that. We look at the budget, which for like you guys with most regional school districts, you have a very simple budget. It's very easy to audit, but we have to do that because it's a compliance test that we have to do. We also test the federal grants. The district receives more than $750,000 of federal funds. As a result, you are subject to they don't call it A133 anymore, it's called Uniform Guidance, but you still have to have your federal grants tested. And we test those because we can get all the compliance testing out and then just tie into the numbers at year end. And then if some of the things where I know there's not been a lot of activity, maybe your OPEB report is still good, maybe your debt is still good, we'll take care of all that in the prelim. At year end, your balance sheet is not complicated, but we pay a lot of attention, obviously, to cash. You had $9.9 .9 million in cash at the end of June and we tie that out pretty much to the penny, and thank goodness I'm happy to report your reports or reconciliations tie out to the penny. Capital assets of $45 million. Um, there wasn't a lot of activity this year, I'll share that with you. Uh, you have the MSBA receivables, I think there's three or four of them that you receive receipts every year for the construction assistance. And then you, on your liability side, you get the two big elephants in the room, if you will, OPEB liability and your pension liability. The pension liability came in about two years ago. That was GASB 68. I'll tell you what happened this year relative to OPIP. So we get all that done, and we finished. I know we came in October 2nd for our year-end work, and we were able to get drafts to Rich on October 18th. And we had to, there was, I, I try to remember, there was one little delay, and it might have been the actuary that didn't get us all the information we needed right away. Uh, re, final reports were issued on December 8th. That's not a bad turnaround. In between what we do, uh, what Rich does is he looks at the report and he reconciles what we have in the report to his general ledger and then asks us questions as to whether or not this is right and can we make a better quality report. His review usually enhances the quality of the report. 
Your financial results. My focus is always on the general fund because that's really the special revenue funds and such that just, they come and go. Uh, the general fund did slightly better than you anticipated in FY17. Revenues came in about a little over $200,000 more. Most of that's related to Medicaid because you don't budget that as a receipt. And when it comes in, it actually just, it just, it just drops to the bottom line. Um, expenses came in lower by about $1 million. Uh, $1 million is a lot of money, but to put it in perspective, it's just about, just about 2% of your budget, which means you were 98% right. Uh, that's a good crystal ball from a budgeting perspective. What it did mean, though, is that you had budgeted about $1.3 million use of E&D, and you didn't have to use it in FY17, which is good. Um, all this info, if you ever have page turners on page 41, it's usually the only schedule I, I talk about in these, in these reports because all the other stuff is what we call gap compliant, and it's not how you run the school. Uh, and then, that, then looking at all other special revenues and other funds that you have, pretty much everything was normal and consistent with the prior year. In capital assets, there wasn't a lot of activity this year. There was $103,000 worth of assets added. The new, biggest thing was the new security system. I think you bought four fo photocopiers for about eleven grand each, and you bought one vehicle for $19,000. And also, I forget how much it was, but the, there was a convection oven that was acquired also. Uh, I always like to say, what is in this report this year that wasn't in there last year? There were no new GASBYs to be implemented for between FY16 and FY17, which means the look of the 16 rep 17 report is the same look as the 16 report. So the overall results. No adjustments were required to be made to the books. These are things that if we found them, we'd ask them to be recorded permanently to the general ledger, and that was not necessary. The audit opinion, which is really the only thing we own in all the pa pages in the financial statement, was unqualified. It, that means, in layman's terms, it's a clean opinion. It can't get any better. A lot of negative language in there. We, we're not about positive assurance. We do negative assurance. We don't pat people on the back. But what that report is saying is that this is a good report as you can get if somebody's going to look at it, like uh, Moody's. Um, and we had great cooperation with the staff. No issues whatsoever. Um, Rich is always the go-to guy, but we coordinate directly with his, the people who work in his, in his organization by when we do like Warren's payable cutoff and looking at receivables. And like I said, responsive, accurate, timely. A couple of comments and observations before I move on to the other report, but it does relate to the financial statements. Um, just to share with you, uh, a community's bond rating can help you and what you get for your bond rating here. The district has a double A bond rating with S&P, which is a good rating. One of the things that they look for is policies and procedures, um, a good plan for, for the use of reserves, establishment of reserves. Uh, we've talked about it a little bit, and I think you probably have talked about the setting up an OPEB trust because those are things that they're looking at. Um, I know you're developing these, and I think that's good because that will allow you to hopefully keep your AA rating, which is a good rating. Um, and then next year, GASB 75 is going to be implemented. That's a new GASB that relates to OPEB. On the balance sheet right now, you have a $14.5 million liability for OPEB. And what that is is the difference between what you're supposed to pay into a trust and what you actually pay as you go to give the benefits to the people who have retired. That's going to be replaced by the actual unfunded liability, which is $30 million. Now, it's a much bigger number. It's going to put a bigger dent in your balance sheet. But just so you know, this stuff has been vetted by the rating agencies for a very long time. It used to be just in the footnotes, now it's on the face of the financial statements. Um, I think it's good because it gets the attention it deserves because it's a real liability. Um, but it's just going to—it's going to be a bigger number, and that's a, that's the new thing that we're going to have when we um, do the 75, GASB 75 implementation in FY18. The report on federal awards. This will be quick. There's three reports in there: a report on compliance with laws and regulations, a report on the actual federal awards themselves, and also a report on the administration of what we call the major grants. The district received or spent, I should say, $1.8 million in 2017. That's pretty much the same as last year. We tested what's called the Special Education Cluster. It's made up of four grants for about $880,000. The reason is that we have to hit what's called a 40% mark for, the, for your, to do the testing. There were no findings, no question cost, three clean opinions, and that's, again, the best that you can get for that type of report. Finally, the management letter. Um, I brought this out because I did want to talk about a couple of things. 
First of all, I'll share with you that there's good news here. Uh, you don't have any internal control issues that I'm reporting to you. And we had one comment resolved, which was the health insurance fund. Very glad to see that. That means you, you got it healthy again, which is good. And we had three comments. One was accounting policies and procedures manual, a financial policies and procedures manual, and a fraud risk assessment. Richard sent me uh, two, two, um, two documents that deal with the first two for sure, and also there's another comment in the back here for what we call that COSO comment where the federal grants had to be documented. I really like what I saw. It was a professional document. I know it's gonna meet the requirements of what we have in here. And I would suggest, except possibly the, for the fraud risk assessment, I'll, the remaining of these comments will probably be resolved as part of the FY18 audit. Uh, the, the documents were really good. Uh, and that's it. You know, it's over a few hundred hours of work, but it's pretty quick to talk <laughs> about. So Now, uh, I have a question on the uh, fraud risk assessment. Yep. <clears throat> um, you, you say um, the risk assessment should be performed and documented by management level, an individual, who would that be? Well, what I'd, I've been, I, that management has to be involved in the, in, the, in the creation of it. Right. I'm more of, I've become more attuned to, to make a recommendation to use somebody from the outside, not necessarily my firm, to be honest with you, because it's, it's unique for our firm. We, 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 but there's a few people out there that do a really good job at this for a reasonable price. And I would say, because I can't get rid of this comment, to be honest with you, it's one of those ones that just has to stay until it's fixed. Right. But it, it, it would be, it's easier for, to get somebody like, I. this is one guy, Eric Kernschiff, he's done it probably for a half a dozen of my clients. He does a great job. He's, he's, um, he, he absolutely goes to what needs to be done, understands what needs to be done, and does it at a good price. And then this comment goes away. This thing came about because of the, um, all the tycos of the world, and the, it was a world con, and all the things that were blowing up, and the, the governing bodies, the board of directors were like saying, we don't know about this, we don't know what this is all about. And the SEC pushed back and said, you're supposed to. And then that went from SEC down into the governmental sector for the same way, where you guys are the governing body, and you should know what the risk, what the risk are associated with everything and determine what your tolerance is for them. It doesn't mean everything has to be perfect. It's just you need to know what could happen, and if the f controls are in place that are being used now, are they sufficient? If they are, it's documented, move on. Okay. And that's you what it's that, all about. Do you have to do that all the time? Like, is it a well, it, off you know what? that? It, I would say most of the systems here are pretty consistent. You know, tickets at an athletic uh, game are probably done the same way and will be done the same way of 10 years from now. But as something evolves, maybe even like a new f software system came in, you may have to do an assessment there, or you bring s another program in, it hasn't been addressed before. That's why I call this a little bit of a living document because when new things come up, you need to address mm -hmm. them. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> so we get an A plus. <laughs> you, you got it. Ninety-eight percent. Uh, an A plus. That's very good. I don't like the. I, it sounds so hokey when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's a tribute to the good. staff, really, yeah. the staff that we have from the head you. all the way down. Yeah. Well, I know your budget's tough. You, mm -hmm. Your budget season's tough, and mm -hmm. you're still, no, we, you're still doing do it. We do have a right. Um, right. great central office yep. for the number of people they have working. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yep. And thank you, Rick. Just a quick note on, on Mr. Sullivan and your staff. They come in, and if it weren't for the fact that I often go to use the conference room and it's not available and, and I'm the superintendent, I get kicked out of my own conference room. <laughs> we wouldn't even know they were there. They're really professional and, um, you know, they do a great job. I appreciate so you saying should, that. Uh, I, you know, pass along our, our thanks to them for, yep. for the way they conduct themselves it in the office. It was Beth and, and um, I think it was Beth and Joe. No, Beth and Caitlin, I think. So I'll make sure they know that. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Thank you very much. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for a, uh, <laughs> in depth report. Thank yes, you. Ho hopefully, not before then. I know, exactly. <laughs> we don't want to see you for a while. <laughs> now, um, the spotlight should, I think we should wait until 7 for them, yeah. right? Yeah, we yeah. could probably do like communication go, supers yeah, report, that's what that stuff. Go. So we'll, we'll wait uh, for the um, kids, we'll wait for 7 o'clock. She's meeting child. them out front at 6.55. Oh, okay. 
and then I'm guessing maybe Rebecca's going to show up at 7 as well. Okay. I don't think she read the fine print. So, um, approval of the minutes. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of our regular meeting of Wednesday, January 10th. So moved. Do I have a second? Okay. Second. Uh, <laughs> discussion. Any? Just one little small thing on page six, very last line. It says a motion by R. Chalk, second by R. Chalk. We'll have to change one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Give, pick a name. I actually had that. <laughs> okay. That's just mine. So, all in favor? And so, motion carries one uh, not uh, present. Okay, approval of the warrant is this evening. Do we have a warrant to sign? Yes, we do. Okay. This one or two. I can take it. Yeah, sure. And that brings us to oh, Citizens Forum this evening. Anyone that would like to uh, come up? Okay. Communications. Mr. Desto, do you have any this evening? None tonight, Mrs. O'Coy. How about our members? Anybody? I actually have one. Um, I, I just wanted to commend um, both Charlton Middle and Dudley Middle School for, for, um, and I'm not well versed in social media. I try, but on Twitter, um, the last week, I, I was able to watch two basketball games, and um, it was really fantastic. That's great. I, I was actually on a bus out to, um, geez, where was I going last night? I was on a bus to Grafton High School. You know, around 4:15, and I got to tune in, and it was the Charlton and Dudley yeah. Middle School basketball games, and it was really That's a cool good. thing. Yeah. So, I, um, I I just wanted to commend both both schools for for putting on things like that. I think it's a nice out of the box uh, way to think, and, and yeah. gives people a chance that maybe at work that can't get to a game a chance to at least look in on their child. So, yeah. okay. I thought that was very exciting. Absolutely, a, fu a funny story <coughs> regarding that. Mr. Packard was very, very proud that he was live streaming the game on Twitter the first time he did it. And he kept on texting me to say, are you, are you watching the stream? How's it look? Is the, how's the picture? You know, all this. And I said, the, the picture's great. You're doing a great job with that. But I can hear everything you're saying to the guy next to you. So stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> it was great, though. I appreciate it. Okay. I had, um, I had the opportunity to go to the first competition for the show choir and at Lowell and th our groups did outstanding both Dudley and Charlton Middle School got golds and did super right. they were just outstanding and this this high school of course always yeah. does very well they did great and they walked away with the gold again that's great and um, I just wanted to comment on how professional all of the students were and they supported the other schools like they were their own it was fantastic thank you and to thank add to you. that that we the, the a lot of the high school students now we've be, it's maybe it's a long-standing tradition but it's become more prominent uh, lately come down and work with the middle school show choirs oh, as well yes. it's, so it's it's becoming a really nice uh nice. you know nice tradition nice program <coughs> then i had uh, one one last thing um i i saw this very comical um, thing on Facebook, it was a uh, principal out in Kentucky, did you get to, a uh, superintendent sure. out in Kentucky or a principal that sang a song about um, a snow day, and actually I can bring it up if you want because it's absolutely <laughs> hysterical, and I want to know when you're going to sing for us, that's what I want to know. <laughs> um, well, all right, so let me say this, <laughs> I'm probably not going to sing, I, I don't know if you saw, uh, I saw something that. very similar, so the principal of uh, the high school in Swansea Mass is a terrific, terrific guy, outstanding principal. And anyway, he, he was a theater guy when he was younger. And he did a, he did a um, you know, all that jazz, the, the theater, so, the show, show tune. Uh, yeah. He did a snow day video to that with the show choir at his school that was so, the, the, it was so professional and so incredible. I said, I'm not singing anything. <laughs> I will just say that I'm working on a video that involves some students and maybe some some pets that I own and, oh. uh, <laughs> and, and, and at, at some point when it's ready and I'm gonna I'm very particular about it but at some point I'm gonna debut it um, but the next one will probably just be more trivia from history <laughs> that's becoming a real competition around the state with some of the superintendents and the principals and so Rosie and Stella are gonna be the stars probably Rosie <laughs> probably Rosie will be in it okay then concludes communications. 
Superintendent's report, Mr. Desto. Thank you, Mrs. O'Coin. Uh, so I'll start with the, there was a memo in your, in your package regarding the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education targeted district review. Now, if this sounds like a broken record, it should, because it's about the third audit we've had inside of two years. And uh, this is a unique one in that they target particular areas uh, of a district. They give very intense, it's a very intense audit with pretty intense feedback. However, none of it has to be implemented. It's voluntary whether or not you implement it, but it's a, it's a lot of, um, they're going to be in the, in the district from February 12th to the 14th, and it is quite involved. It requires a sizable amount of time in interviews for administration and teachers, as well as significant classroom observation time. And in fact, uh, Lorinda and I uh, spoke about it yesterday. They, they had the principals being interviewed for an hour and a half on Monday, and then an hour and a half again on Tuesday, and then later Tuesday afternoon. And it's like, why do they need them for so long? They have students in their buildings. So um, in any event, as part of this, the important thing for the school committee uh, tonight is that school committee members are invited to meet with the visiting team at one of three different times, uh, as in the memo we, we put in the uh, package says, February 12th from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Uh, we can take up to three participants from the school committee. Or February 13th, there are two times, 11 to 12 or 4 to 5, where up to two participants can, can come in each uh, time block. And again, just a reminder to let Mrs. Allen know, if you are available and willing, it is optional. Um, we'd like to have your feedback, uh, well, more specifically, the, the department would like to have your feedback, um, but again, it's not something we're mandated to do. So there's that. If anyone has any questions, you can certainly ask me or Lorenda. Um, well, now I don't mean to brag, but it looks like I have finally arrived on the scene. I've been nominated for a seat on the Mass Association of Regional Schools Board of Directors. So, oh, hey, well, so you know what that means. Somebody was playing a joke on me <laughs> because I wasn't at a meeting or something like that. Uh, I think you know probably who it was, too, Mr. Deremian. And um, now I'll be out of the office for two hours a month <laughs> if, I, if I am selected. I'm only a nominee at this point. But in all seriousness, I'm wondering if being on the inside of something like that might be helpful to the district in some way. So I'll, I'll take it a lot more serious than that introduction was right there. Um, also, some good news uh, from, the, from Boston. I, I was finally contacted by uh, Senator Fatman's associate, and I'm working on a, a time of the day, but we have secured a meeting with Senator Fatman for February 6th to discuss, among other things, the generator replacement at Shepherd Hill. So I don't know what will come of it, but uh, he is following through on his uh, comment where he, where he would at least try to help us with some capital items. Okay, this is a little bit uh, lengthy, but I think it, it deserves some time. I want to I want to mention, and I want to uh, commend our innovative students of the month for November and December, who were recently honored. Um, the first one is for November, and it's Jordan Russell. She's a fourth grader from the Heritage School, and I, it's just you get a little write up when they win and I, I couldn't help it I had there were so many things I'm trying to get just the, the best but it, I ended up having to highlight a lot of it I want to read you some of the reasons why Jordan was nominated for innovative student of the month this young lady uh, according to her teacher while they were studying animal adaptations and ecosystems did some independent research on what turkeys eat and how remember it was November now and how the Sun's energy reaches us through eating turkey now, I don't even want to go down that road but good for her uh, and and it ad she adds, thanks to her, we also know why elephants have the physical adaptation of large ears. So she did her own independent research. Um, at Thanksgiving, she and her partner took the time to make sure that their model of the Mayflower didn't just float, it actually looked like the Mayflower. And during holiday steam centers, her elf on the shelf made it to the floor in several different vehicles, <laughs> including a bubble wand slide and a custom car. Goes on to say she does some things at home as well, and I thought this was something great to run. She, just this week, Jordan made her father a robot out of broken stuff she found around the house, including pieces of mechanical pencil, a bottle cap, and paper clips. I think she's a deserving uh, innovative student of the month. Um, and then for December, it was Trevor Wallace from Charlton Middle School. Tre uh, Trevor is new to us this year in the district, uh, but he's proven to be a phenomenal student always strives to do his best in class and 
Uh, his teacher, his STEM teacher, says that when they do projects, he exceeds the classroom expectation from creating in Photoshop to designing 3D printing. He dedicates extra time and effort to make his projects rise, rise above the rest. And she says, I look forward to seeing more great things from him as the year progresses. So congratulations to Jordan and to Trevor. We're very proud of them for the work that they've done. And finally, um, although she isn't here, I don't believe, I do need to mention, I want to congratulate Mrs. Kathleen Pastore, the principal of Heritage School, who has been nominated for the Thomas C. Passios Elementary Principal of the Year Award. If she is selected, which we will know, I believe, in May, she would represent Massachusetts elementary principals at the National Convention in Washington, D.C. Kathleen, were she here, would be the first one to, um, she'd be the first one to shy away from this and to tell you two things. One, she would say that this is a tribute not only to her, but to her excellent staff and students. And two, she would say that any of her principal colleagues would also have been deserving of this recognition. But make no mistake, this very well deserved for a person who truly and deeply cares about each child within her building. So we congratulate Kathleen, and that's a feather in the cap to Heritage School and the district. Yeah. Interestingly enough, it's probably best that she missed that. <laughs> she doesn't deal well with things like that. So that's it, Mrs. O'Coin. Okay. That concludes the superintendent's report. Um, and we will table the student rep report. Oh, oh we'll, yeah, until if she may if be she, coming at 7. Right. We'll table it for now. Yeah. We should be ready. I think we may and be ready for coming? the other thing. Let me go check. I'm t I'll check on the student um, spotlight. Okay. All right. And we can do that if they're all. So okay. I brought my friends here because um, the first school that I worked at, we were a K through okay. six school, and we never mingled. You know, so I, um, we never, the, the K stayed with the K's, we had our own lunch, the recess, and we never mingled. And so when I became principal of Charlton Elementary School, it was really important to me that we were a school, not just preschool, not just kindergarten, not just first grade, but we were a school. So on the last Friday of every month, we gather together as a school and we have a spirit day. Um, you can dress for your spirit day, as my friends have here, uh, or you can choose not to. Many classes make things for the spirit day so that everybody can be included. And um, we just gather in the gym at two o'clock on spirit days and have a great time. So I've asked my friends here, each one representing one of our first grades, if they would tell me about one of the spirit, I don't repeat them, so they, every three years we, we have a different one. So they have a lot to choose from. So they're gonna tell you about one of their spirit days and what they like about spirit days. And some of them have given me some ideas for some new spirit days. All right, go ahead. My name is Riley Blackwell and I'm in Mrs. Murray's first grade. I like reverse day where we dress up as teachers and teachers dressed up like us. <laughs> I like when we get together on, in the gym on spirit days. I think a future spirit day should be reverse speaking day. This is where we would say something like, you are not pretty, really would mean they are pretty. And, and our friend here dressed like her teacher who came tonight to support her. So she's nice. dressed like Mrs. Nice. Murray. My name is Jackson Schneider and I'm in Mrs. DeMillo's first grade. My favorite spirit day was holiday sweater day. We got to wear something that we don't usually wear on that day. I like this day because I really like Christmas. I think a future spirit day should be Star Wars Day. Yay, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. My name is Claire Goldsmith and I'm in Mrs. Davis' first grade. My favorite spirit day was Pig Day. I like Pig Day because there were so many Pig Days with. On Pig Day, we got to dress up like pigs. I think a future spirit day should be Penguin Day. My name is Eliana Holland and I am in Mrs. Bissell's fourth grade. My favorite spirit day was Disney Day. Spirit day is so fun and I get to spend time with my friends. I like dressing up like my favorite character and dancing around in the gym. I think we should have a crazy hair day. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Adam Hask and I am in Mrs. McQuay's first grade. I like ugly tie day. I like this because we got to see everyone's crazy ties. I like that we go to the gym for an assembly and do fun things. I would like us to have a crazy hair day. 
I love that unique tie My name that he has Thomas on. Thomas Pontus, and I'm in Mrs. Curl's first grade. I liked Wacky Socks Day. I liked the fun activities we do, and I liked when everyone wore wacky socks. I think we should have a monster. Day. <laughs> monster. Day. monster Day. My name is Denver Dave, Dave, Davis, and I am in Mrs. Denver's first grade. One of my favorite field days was the monster day. I like when we get to bring things to school on field day. I like when we go to the gym. And I thank my friends, and I am here today with my teddy bear in my pajamas to invite you to our next spirit day, which is this Friday. And guess what it is? Teddy bear pajama day. So if you would like to come, you are welcome to come and join us. Right? Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> but you have to be in your pajamas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm right. a potato. And I'm going to be sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Would it be okay if we just brought a teddy bear? Didn't wear pajamas? Would, that, <laughs> would you Gesto, let us in? Mr. you are allowed to do that if you okay. would like it. That would, that, would, that would be great. <laughs> Students, I want to tell you before you leave, first of all, I want to thank you for being here, okay? This is going to be the highlight of the night because you're what, we're, you're what this is all about, really. And I'm so impressed with how well you speak and read. Yeah, That's know. the thing that stands out to me. Yeah. Um, and is it Adam with the tie? Adam, I want to tell you that uh, my wife would tell you every day for me is ugly tie day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, five days a week. So you and I, we like that we'll do I Star Wars day tie. together. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you very much for coming. We really appreciate it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I might have to just go with the teddy bear. On that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bring Rosie along. Your pa <laughs> yeah, I could do that. A live teddy bear. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. That brings sorry, us to new business. Like FY 2019 budget presentation, Mr. Desto, part one. Thank you. I, you know, I can't help it. They put it on a tee for me. But as soon as the budget presentation came around, everybody <laughs> headed out the back door. That's okay. Uh, this is actually not so bad tonight. I, I just want to say, as by way of an introduction, that it's become my custom to lead off the budget season with a presentation of the educational priorities of the district for the coming year. As we move forward presenting the dollars and cents to the school committee on February 14th, what I present tonight should help bring into focus the manner in which many of those dollars will be used. This is often the most exciting of the budget presentations, which isn't saying all that much, as it lays out the priorities that will directly affect our students, some of our finest of whom we just saw. Tonight, uh, in recognition of financial realities and the need for significantly increased funding from our towns, I'm going to touch upon how we plan to prioritize things over the next two fiscal years, not just one. That doesn't mean the presentation's longer. Don't worry, it's pretty succinct. Um, this presentation represents the vision that's shared by all of us on, our, on the leadership team in the district. It does not necessarily provide everyone with all that they want, but it makes an honest effort to close the gap between what our students learn and what they're going to need beyond high school. I can tell you this as a superintendent, but also as the parent of a young man who's hopefully going to be with us in the district for another eight years. I'm excited about what I'm about to present. And you wouldn't be the first or the last person to call me crazy, but I actually believe that it's going to be possible. This is a bit of an awkward uh, presentation setup, so I'm going to do the best I can. It's hard to see, but... <clears throat> should have requested a podium, but that would have made it even more in, impersonal. Am I in the way? So I'll just kind of stand here and, and do the very best I can. Can you even see that at all back there? Yeah? You have better eyes than me? Just a quick look back, and especially for the benefit of those who haven't been in this room the past few years. The past three years, our priorities have remained pretty consistent. We have tried to reduce class sizes in grades one to three, uh, and we've learned that we would like to try to expand that to grades K and 4 as well. We've tried to improve social-emotional supports <coughs> for students. 
strengthen and increase our STEAM opportunities and provide opportunities for our students to connect globally. I'll just show you, this is just a quick uh, run through of some of the progress we've made. I suppose you can decide for yourself if this is progress. I think it is. Uh, right now, as of today, our class sizes are, are right here. In kindergarten, 23.4 and 24, bigger than we'd like them to be. In grade one, 20.2 and 22. Grade two, 21, 21. Grade three, 23 and 22. Well, 23 is higher than we'd like, but better than where we've been in the past. And in grade four, we're at 21 and 22.5. So those are nothing to be ashamed of, but we still have work to do there. And we'll keep that as a priority. As far as social emotional support, I know you can read, so I, I won't read every slide. I'll highlight a couple of things. We, um, we, we hired, Mr. Chaplin hired two adjustment counselors at Shepherd Hill this year. I want to be clear, those were not additional positions. Those took the place of two other types of positions that we had had previously for a variety of reasons that we, didn't, we chose not to replace the same position. So they're not additional staff. However, it has made a big difference. It's given the kids a lot more time, contact time with support staff, and it's been a very big help. Um, there's a variety of other things here, as you can see. We've had mental health first aid training throughout the district. We've had uh, signs of suicide training at both middle schools. And there's just a variety of intangible things as well. Always the best social emotional support is when a kid shows up in the morning, he sees someone who cares about him smiling and saying good morning, we're glad you're here. Those relationships are always the best social emotional support and that's one of the things that our district's always been really good at. Maybe the area we've made the most progress since I've been superintendent is not because of me, uh, but has been STEAM. Um, we added a STEAM director and in an homage to districts that have more funding, sometimes when you have a person dedicated to helping you in a particular area, it actually works. And um, so that was a great decision by this committee. And you can see we've created the STEM pathways, secured project lead the way grants. I want to just quickly read you something that we think is kind of exciting. You know, I'll get to that later. I'll get to that later. But you can see some of the things that we've done. The opportunities our students have now are better than they were a few years back. And then global awareness, we've made the progress in the following areas as well. We continue to operate what I think is the best foreign language trip around. Um, increase the number of students who can experience foreign language, but we, as I'll talk about later, do have a ways to go with that. That's a quick, quick look back. We can be proud of our progress. What, this is probably hard for you to see, but what this says, th these are the four industrial revolutions that our country has gone through. I won't go through that. I did that a few, few meetings ago. I will add, just as a reminder, that we still have work to do. Our schools, not just in Dudley Charlton, but most places, are still training kids for the second industrial revolution that goes all the way back to the invention of electricity and the assembly line and those things back in the early late 1800s, early 1900s. Now our economy is here. What's in between, it's not this simple, but what's in between <coughs> is the gap that we have to close as a district between what our students are learning in school today and what they're going to need when they get out of college or when they get out of high school and go into careers. So with that, I want to add into that gap comes our 2019 and 2020 educational priorities. And as I said, in recognition of our financial situation, I'll roll this out in two years. The first year, priorities are STEAM, as to keep making progress there, particularly with project-based learning, and we can never forget, we still need to progress with social emotional support. Year two, we'll try to focus on STEAM, the global awareness piece, and also college and career pathways. We'll try to strengthen those for our students. I'll explain how in a few minutes. First with STEAM and project-based learning, one of our big priorities is going to be to upgrade our technology infrastructure at all K-8 to buildings. That means six of our seven buildings, basically. Every place but Shepherd Hill, but don't worry, Shepherd Hill's in the plan too. 
And how does this benefit our students? Well, I think you could figure it out, but it removes a barrier to digital learning. Uh, we all saw, and it would have happened at any of our schools when we had a training January 2nd at Shepherd Hill. And the trainer said, okay, go to such and such a website. And everybody took out their phones and went like this, and then what happened? Uh, nothing's happening, because too many people were, on, were going off of the same, um, on the same internet system. So we do need to upgrade all our wiring in all our schools. We need to upgrade our switches. Infrastructure matters. It may not sound all that exciting, but it's without it, that's your playing field. And so it's incredibly important that if we're going to implement the Massachusetts digital standards across all of our curriculum and have our kids learn how to learn on different types of devices, which we're supposed to do, they better be able to have access, and that requires wiring. A second priority will be the addition of two technology teachers slash integration specialists. Now that, that's one person. It's two people, but they do the same thing. So right now, to give you an idea, our elementary schools, like say Mason Road and Dudley Elementary, share one technology teacher. So he or she is 0.5 in both schools. We'd like to add one on each side of the district who half the time is teaching technology standards and the other half of the time is in the classrooms helping the teachers who teach the regular curriculum integrate technology into the regular learning process so that technology becomes a thing that's not like once in a while we have a treat we get to work on the computers it becomes an everyday all the time thing because that's what it is for our students in the real world like it or not <clears throat> and then there is an emphasis on project-based learning. This is going to be our professional development theme throughout the summer and into next year. We've talked, uh, Mrs. Antossi, Mrs. Rabin and I in December talked about the benefits of project-based learning. Still covers the curriculum, but it's an engagement. There's a lot of preparation for college and careers embedded in that. A few other things I want to mention about STEAM, and this is where I want to get my, my papers. This year we secured a grant for Project Lead the Way in the high school. So in the high school this year, let me make sure I have this right. Mrs. Harris shared this with me. <clears throat> Never had this before, but this year there are two classes of principles of biomedical science running at the high school. And next year we're gonna be running in addition to that a course that's called Human Body Systems. Um, now, we have applied for a grant to extend this to the middle school. And if we are successful in getting this grant, and Mr. Starchevsky and Mr. Packard, along with Mrs. Ayers, visited a school that has this, their middle school, then our middle school students will be able to take courses such as design and modeling, automation and robotics, app makers, which I seems would be popular, science and technology, and computer science for innovators and makers. So a significant step forward if we're able to secure that grant. And we feel pretty good about it, but you never know. <clears throat> and I know you can read, I won't go through the whole thing, but um, Mr. Chaplin is working on a few things at the high school where capstone projects and uh, science and engineering fair are, cre are for credit and not in addition to the other course load that you have. Uh, we're moving toward paperless grading and communication exclusively. And um, very important, you'll hear this come up a couple times, the Massachusetts digital frameworks, digital standards, need to be embedded across the curriculum. Um, if anybody, I won't go into that tonight because I don't wanna spend too much time and bore you, but if you have any interest in what, that, what does that look like, what are those standards, what do our kids have to do, I have that information for you if you, by request. Social emotional support, priority, Will be, to, will be the addition of two adjustment counselors. Similar to the tech integration people, we would put one on each side of the district to work with our pre-K to four students. And the benefit here is obvious. More support at a young age, builds a solid emotional base <coughs> while learning critical basic skills. Our students at those ages are learning how to read, they're learning how to write, they're learning how to be students, how to be human with one another. And they're also, some of them are also struggling and they need support. 
And we only have at our elementary schools a psychologist at each school, which may sound like a lot, but at least half, and often more than half, of that person's time is taken up with testing for special education. So there's only that half-time person then left to really support. And so guess who ends up doing a lot of the supporting? The teachers, the principal, whoever. And they do a good job, but we need people that are professional in this area. They're experts. And I, I couldn't help it because it made me think of, my, of the great Frederick Douglass. Truer words were never said. It's better to build strong children than to mend broken adults. So if a lot of what you see here seems to be loading services down at the lower level, that's kind of what I believe. Okay, so that was year one. And I'm not going to get into tonight how, how, how funding dependent that is. Please understand, the school committee knows, I don't even have to tell the school committee, that whenever I say addition of these positions, that could mean it takes the place of something else. It doesn't necessarily mean it's new. It's, a, it's new in the, in the budget. Um, we always look at that, we always analyze that. Now, <clears throat> the following year, priority will be to upgrade and steam the infrastructure at Shepherd Hill. Mr. Chaplin and I are working on a statement of interest for the roof at Shepherd Hill. If we are successful with that, it'll be around this time that we're going to the voters for that money, for an, in a debt exclusion. And we, would, we could add this upgrade into that. And by the way, any infrastructure upgrades, wiring, switches, those kinds of things that aren't real exciting to talk about but are necessary, we are eligible for a small, it kind of turns out to be not that big a percentage, but we're, in, we're eligible for some reimbursement through E-rate. So to do, like, for example, to do all the buildings would cost about, uh, I, I want to say, maybe like $2 million. And we would get back something like three or 400000 from E-rate later after the fact. So again, as we learned in our professional development day, our high school students need to have this barrier removed. There needs to be no reason why they can't do this on a daily basis. <clears throat> and I added this as a, a huge priority in 2020 because by this time, I think we need to be, have those standards embedded in all our classes K to 12. <clears throat> as far as global awareness, a huge priority that year. Um, one of the big things that for the last 14 years has bothered me when I became principal of the middle school was around the time when we had to make significant reductions and some of that was foreign language teachers. Well, history has proven that learning a foreign language is unbelievably good for young people. And so in the year 2020, it's highly likely that I'll be asking for the addition of two middle school foreign language teachers so that we can double the number of kids who take foreign language at the middle schools. The way it is now, I think most people know, you have to qualify for it, and oftentimes it's, the cutoff is like a kid who got a 93 average. So you can imagine, if you got a 92 average, or even a 91, or if you were more like a student like me, a 79, <laughs> you, you have no chance of getting that class, and that's just not good enough. So we, um, if we're able to do this, we think that maybe we can move Rosetta Stone down to our younger kids, not as a day-to-day -day course, but as something they can just experience once in a while, that they can play around with and kind of expo you know, experiment with and just be exposed to language and cultures. And I think by this time, we should have an international partner in each of our seven schools. It is possible we'll have this sooner, because it really isn't, uh, it isn't a funding-dependent thing. But the benefits that I'm reading about for schools that have a, a partner overseas, what kids learn from that is invaluable. As far as college and career, Mr. Chaplin and I talked yesterday. Um, there is a need for somebody who can sort of take the lead on, almost like serve, I'll use the term agent, you know all these great athletes have agents, right? And the agent kind of helps direct the career of the great, per of the great athlete and we almost need our, somebody in our guidance department who can be like uh, an agent for our students or kind of guide them toward, hey what is it going to look like for you, your college or career? 
I don't know if anybody read about what they're doing in Chicago. Don't ask me how they're going to pull it off. But every kid to get a diploma has to have a plan in place for what they're going to do beyond high school. I don't know how they follow up on it or, you know, here's my plan, I get my diploma and then I don't do it. I don't know what they do about that. But so for us in 2020, we may be looking at the addition of a director of college and career pathways. Um, you know, similar to a director of guidance, except that guidance has changed, you know, in the past handful of years. And so we need somebody who'd be dedicated to ensuring that our students' high school experience is relevant to what they're going to do beyond that, and who can guide the people directly beneath him or her to making sure that's the case. As you might imagine, Mr. Chaplin and his assistant principals are running ragged every day and really can't dedicate a lot of time to that. So I, I found the friendliest looking elephant I could find for this. And I'll just mention, without going into detail, what we all know are the elephants in the room. The first one, funding. And it's no secret that this year, we are going to be working with our towns on how to increase the amount of funding that they can support us with. That's likely to take the form of an override, but that's a decision that the selectmen make and not us. And so um, some of this is funding dependent, and that's definitely something that needs to be mentioned. Uh, this is something where our leadership team comes in. This requires a mindset shift. There's no question about it. You know, I, I don't mean to keep on bringing up sports, but I was thinking about the Patriots and how great they've been over the years. And if you go back to the first Super Bowl they won, I think Tom Brady threw like 24 passes that game. And I think the last game, last weekend, he threw like 60 or 58 passes or something like that. They, the reason they've done so well is they've adapted and they've adjusted. And we as a district, all of us, from me on, especially me, have to realize that we, when we, if we want to do things differently, not because of our health or because we think it's cool, but because it's what our kids need. And so it's time for us to start throwing 60 passes a game, I guess. <laughs> Shepherd Hill will never do that. <laughs> and finally, up, oh, wrong one, is unity. So important that in order to do something that's so different, if all of us aren't together, we can argue behind the scenes a lot, and we do, but we have to be together publicly from the school committee and the superintendent right on. Uh, all of us have to be bought in and, and doing whatever it takes for the kids. So some important upcoming date, dates related to the uh, budget. We have a special meeting on budget a week from today, no, two weeks from today. And then on the 14th, uh, Mr. Matthew and I will present the initial budget to the school committee for their approval. On the 27th, that will be the deadline for the selectmen to approve a special override election. Hopefully they will, and then we can begin the process of really moving forward. Um, March 14th will be the public hearing in what our district agreement calls the final budget, although it's far from the final budget. Then on April 3rd, tentatively, is the date for our special election. May 14th, May 21st are the town meetings. And finally, go ahead and say it. It's a picture of me in high school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I talk about this stuff and what it's going to take to get it done, you know what the first thing people say to me is? Never do, never, that's never going to happen. You can't do that. But I don't think that's what you want in a superintendent. I do believe we can do this, um, and we're sure going to try. So I think our kids need us too. I'll take any questions that anybody has and um, do the best I can with those. Any questions? I'll leave that kid up there and we'll see if we can be serious <laughs> the rest of the night while looking at him. That's him or her, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Greg. Next item, report of the budget and finance subcommittee, and Stephanie is the chair of that committee. Okay, well, um, Greg touched upon a lot of it, um, 
we discussed in our meeting. Um, but a couple of things that we discussed were um, which question we would actually put out for the ballot um, if we were to do the two and a half override. And we all thought that using a single question for one year rather than doing two or a pyramid would be better. We also have been discussing all the needs, which as you saw on the screen were a lot. And our district has um, technology, staffing, and building repair needs. The monetary number of such needs would honestly be somewhere between $5 million to $7 million. But we also know that we can't ask the town's residents for that. Although we haven't um, finalized a number because we still have, are waiting on the governor's budget, um, we will unfortunately not be able to get everything that we need on our list. We did, however, discuss which need would have the biggest impact, which we went over with the technology because it would touch every child and every grade level. And that would be hiring the staff and just getting our students moving forward to, well, not to, forward in a technology-based world. And then we also discussed writing either a policy or procedure on the warrants, right? It was either, did we discuss it being a procedure? Well, we had a disagreement on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we, that's so for the whole committee. Do. Well, the whole so committee has to decide. And um, a training on the process of the warrants for the school committee members. Yeah. And that's it. So uh, any questions for Stephanie first <clears throat> before we discuss the warrant? Mr. Desco, did you have anything uh, to add? Or? You know, Mrs. Reed nailed it. Um, that was did great. a really good job. I, I just say it was a really productive meeting. <clears throat> we had swapped it out from um, the Wednesday. We had a snow day before the week before to Monday morning, and maybe because it was Monday morning, everybody was well rested. I don't know, but it was a really, really productive meeting, <laughs> and we took game. some steps forward. And <laughs> you know, did you come up with any ballpark figure for the override? Uh, well, it's, you know, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, please, you. Um, it's because we, we just really want to wait for that governor's right. number. We just don't want to give any false hope because, honestly, we could come out with a number, but then the budget comes out and we're going to have to raise that. Raise and we it. just don't, no we, false hope. We will say that $1.5 million is fixed costs. Mm -hmm. right. We added nothing right. new mm -hmm. for staff raises, health insurance, it's all fixed cost. Yeah. It's close to 1.5 million on the fixed right. cost, without anything new. Uh, right. The budget. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. So then we'll discuss the warrant first. Uh, I know um, Elaine would like uh, training, so we in the warrant. But I mean, it should be volunteer. Tier. If you want to do it, fine. Uh, but we could set up something, um, you know, in a day mm -hmm. uh, with Mindy, right, Greg? We could do that. Yes. And if the school committee wants to attend, fine. I mean, it's not going to be mandatory. But uh, does everyone agree to that, that we should just set up something? Yes. Yes. Okay. And it'll, you know, if you think, you know, really know enough about it then you can go okay okay so who has any suggestions <laughs> of the time do you want it i know joe and um, ray can't come during the day but well maybe to help just kind of narrow it down a little bit mindy i you know she she obviously works full-time uh, in another capacity and worked with us part-time and she generally comes in about on Friday, on Fridays, she? and so Friday she's in generally in, right, and so maybe if we could look to just say, hey, can you come in a little earlier that particular Friday? Is Friday a terrible day? But if it was something like, you know, or 10, maybe 10 a.m., uh, 11 a.m. or something Maybe we can like have that. it, no, but we could have it at the end of her work period so she wouldn't have to come in early yeah, either to way. miss her, and this way, if whoever wants How to go. How soon are we looking to do this training? Maybe the thing I could I can talk to her and see what you know what's convenient for her and then reach back out to the commu to the committee. Yeah, I mean, if I could have a little bit of notice, I could try to work something sure. out. But you know, it's, it's, yeah. 
and it's, it's complete, um, you know, volunt. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. Um, so we'll work on a date, like some, uh, do we agree Friday would be okay? Yeah. And maybe later after she completes her work, if she works with until five or four, whenever she works, we could come in after that. But we would want like a week's notice. Mm. At least, okay, sure. At least, okay. <clears throat> so we'll work on that. They all came up whether to make a policy or procedure or anything at all. But we didn't discuss that much because we figured that should be the full committee's input on that one. She, uh, Mrs. Rabbit had a sample from Wachusett, quite a long, I didn't read the whole thing, but it was like three or four pages long, wasn't it? I, I think would go it, for a uh, procedure. Well, I suggest a procedure because if anything changes, the policy has to go through mm -hmm. a lot of steps, whereas a procedure, yeah. we could just change it that day. Was Wachusett's a policy or procedure? It was a policy. Mr. Duster was going to look up others, I think, weren't you, to see and yeah. kind of write our own. Yeah, I mean, whatever the committee decides, I'll figure I'll get some samples and we'll work on that because it can say the same thing but if we call it a procedure I think it's easy to There's work with myself well and the flexibility right, right. you can we change have things yeah do we agree to that the procedure I agree to that I'm fine. Okay. so that it's easy How about to change Mary? yeah that's fine. yeah I think we all agree okay. right. erase it yes mm -hmm. so we'll do it as a procedure instead and of the Mr. Policy. Desto can look up and put something together Boris yep so Okay, yeah, for next meeting, maybe, uh, I don't think we can probably get it together by the next subcommittee meeting, but certainly by the next full committee meeting. Yeah, our next meeting is the 30th, which yeah. is next week. Right. So don't, we got too many other things. There's no right. Maybe for the budget meeting on the 7th. Any other questions or for Stephanie? Good job, Stephanie, you did a good job. Thank you. You skip B, Pauline. Mm. Skip B. <laughs> what? You skip B. Which was all set to go. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Batting out of order. Oh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Don't move out. Uh, Mr. Matthew. Thank you very much. Um, we do have a uh, donation uh, from the school committee to consider this evening. Uh, Shepherd Hill Regional High School has received a donation of $750 from the Auburn Webster. Uh, Lodge of Elks uh, for the Global Studies trip abroad, specifically to provide an additional excursion while du uh, visiting Dublin, London, Paris, and the D-Day beaches in Normandy. Make motion to accept the donation. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries, it's unanimous. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, the IT department has submitted um, uh, some uh, uh, obsolete and non-working equipment uh, to be declared surplus. Um, the listing is here. Uh, these are primarily things that, again, are, are out of order, broken, not repairable. Um, if any of these um, that are going to be declared surplus are still in working order, um, you know, we there are some times where we still may utilize them. You know, um, for example, uh, Mr. Dark Angelo was talking about the need to have a Chromebook as somebody was climbing a ladder to do something, and that's a perfect place to use something that's obsolete because if it falls, well, we're not losing anything. <laughs> no. um, but there, you know, um, if, if there is anything here um, that is usable, Mrs. Reed, to your point during the Budget and Finance Subcommittee, um, you know, we'll certainly try to make sure that it gets utilized in, in some possible way. I'll entertain a motion to um, approve mm -hmm. the obsolete non-working equipment listed below, and we declare it as surplus. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, the quarterly report for the general fund uh, was attached. Uh, I, I do want to point out that... Um, with change in regulation for transportation for foster students, um, the requirement is now that they be transported back to the district of origin um, and that foster students that are pending placement are no longer considered homeless. Um, these expenses have um, increased dramatically in the number of families that are taking, that are using um, uh, or, or that are in this circumstance um, have more than uh, or about tripled uh, over last year. So that's putting some downward pressure on, on our budget. Um, 
along with uh, special ed transportation um, due to increased utilization for out-of-district students and increased uh, monitors. So we do have some pressure points in the budget. Individually, they're not terrible. Um, however, combined along with the age of our facilities and um, the known issues that we have, such as the generator at the high school that we're, we're, we'll get repaired, um, and you know the air conditioning in, in this room and the fire panels at the two middle schools and Dudley Elementary School, I'm just I'm, I'm expressing a, a level of concern right now for how much money that we're going to be able to return back uh, into the budget at the end of the year. As Mr. Sullivan indicated, you know, we, we were able to return not just the revenue surplus last year, but we were able to return, you know, a, a decent amount from the, um, from the general fund. Um, and we'll talk about excess and deficiency in a moment, but if we can't continue to return those funds, eventually our budgeting process and our budget, budgeting method is going to get interrupted, putting even more, uh, even more pressure um, on, our, on our member towns. So. Um, I don't know if anybody has specific questions about any of the numbers, but I'll keep the committee uh, updated uh, as we go forward, even outside of the regular quarterly reports, um, as I start to see um, areas of concern. I just wanted to add, remind at our budget meeting that if a child leaves here and goes to, let's say, Lemister as a foster child, we're responsible for bringing him back to school here. And it could run as much as you thought, 95000 It could be as high as that, 95000 we never. For this year, yeah. It's not considered homeless. We pay to have them come back, correct? That's correct. Which I'd never known that before. That's now relatively that, new. That, that's yeah. a new uh, that's change in the law for this year. Yeah. Um, so it, that will be a new budget category that we'll have to include some level of funding for um, for next year. Can you explain a little bit, for my, at least for my purposes, what what the change is between the homeless status versus the in in the past the the if a student was in a temporary foster placement which re, which necessitated them coming back they they to the district, they were classified as homeless, and as a result, we were able to um, be reimbursed by the state. There's no such fixed reimbursement yet, although Mr. Um, the, the Department of uh, Education uh, did send out uh, a survey about expenses, uh, so I know that they are looking to secure some level of funding and some level of reimbursement for these unexpected expenses that everybody's uh, uh, suffering through this year. However, that doesn't eliminate our particular um, issue. Thank you. Um, uh, so, um, excess and deficiency fund. Um, as I was writing this and as we were prepared to, to go to print, I, I was going to say that uh, my expectation was that the um, excess and deficiency would be certified by, the, by our budget meeting of February 14th. Um, and as I hit print on the first copy, I got the email saying that we actually were certified. Um, oh. So I knew it was in progress. Um, so it, it, the number, um, you know, as indicated at the last meeting, is 1.8 uh, million. Uh, that certainly is um, a good amount and does provide a little bit of buffer um, if we aren't able to return that full amount in FY18 to the E&D fund. Uh, again, primarily it's due to um, not having the, the deficit in the health insurance trust fund. Um, and at this early stage, knocking on what I will presume is real wood, uh, we're running reasonably well in the trust fund again. Um, so that's the, there is some positive news there. Um, that being said, I would um, I will put this bug in the committee's ear as I did last time. Um, at, at the next meeting, I, I will bring forward a recommendation for um, spending a little bit of this money, uh, approximately 100000 or so. Um, to provide the district with a uh, new school bus. Um, our school bus is 10 years old and has um, repeatedly failed inspections requiring um, repairs to get it back um, into usable shape. And that school bus, um, I, re I recall very, very vividly that one of the first meetings I came to uh, the committee here um, was in the budget and then at the next meeting it was out of the budget. And the following year, I tried to do the same thing and <laughs> tried to leave it in there, and it was one of the first things that was gone. So it, it's a need that's been recognized for a while. It's a, it certainly is a, a very useful tool for us to have at our disposal. All of the schools use it um, at various times through the year. It is a cost saver, um, but it does cost a little bit of money mm -hmm. to invest in, and, and I think the time is uh, now, and we have this, uh, this available pot of money. Uh, does anybody have any questions on the E&D or... 
then ju just a last couple of uh, things. Um, I let the committee know at the last meeting, and we had a, a very fruitful, I thought, conversation about the um, uh, possibility of doing a joint bid for uh, transportation services um, with a couple of neighboring towns. Um, the next day after that meeting, we found out that one town had dropped out, um, and that the weekend during the weekend, we found out that another town had dropped out. And at that point, with um, a lot of the um, or you know, 40 percent of the, the members dropping out, we felt it was best um, for Dudley Charlton to pursue our own bid, um, and that's what we do. We have our own bid out on the street. Um, uh, for a three-year contract, which would coincide with you know, and give us this opportunity to do it in three years. However, we did uh, put in the bid a two-year option. Um, in the past, the district has gone out for a five-year contract um, on, the, on the transportation bid. Uh, I don't think that there's a um, real harm in making it a two-year option, uh, again, because there, we may have a benefit of, of joining in with a joint bid in three years if everybody's in sync and, and um, fully aware and capable of doing it um, and if not then we lock in for the for the two optional years and you know continue to handle our own business um, and w one of the key things that we were waiting for was indeed the governor's budget and some numbers have been released um, today so just to give the committee a, a brief update on on what we have um, the Chapter 70 funds were increased by $20 per student, uh, resulting in about $75,000 additional revenue um, for the district. Uh, the transportation uh, cherry sheet estimate is up about $20,000 uh, for the district. Uh, unfortunately, one of the uh, bad pieces of news here is that the estimated charges for school choice and charter school going out increased rather dramatically uh, by about $150,000. And that's one of the key reasons why, in addition to our health insurance uh, quotation and the transportation bid, that you, it was a wise decision to wait because if we had gone forward and not been able to plan for that $150,000, all of a sudden th those priorities that the district has identified are going to once again have to take a back seat. Now at least we can factor it in. Where the numbers you know, work out to be is where they'll work out to be, and you know, we'll have a lot of discussion about that on February 7th and a follow-up and formal vote on February 14th. What was that, 150? Um, school, school choice, choice sending out and charter school going out. Okay. So students going to other places rather than this district. And the, a large portion of that is these virtual, um, it's a, like a virtual on academy. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the vast majority of our school choice out are online programs that are considered to be school choice and the, the one that the state runs the department of education runs is called teca and that one is the only school choice placement that's 7500 instead of 5000 and that's where the largest number of our school choice out kids are mm -hmm. um and the you know I'll remind the committee of uh, Mr. Abrams' um, report and, you know, indications of Charlton's minimum contribution and Dudley's minimum contributions going up, and indeed they did. Um, Charlton's minimum went up by about a, by 182,000. Uh, Dudley's minimum contribution went up by 387,000, and those numbers are, are pretty close to what uh, Mr. Abrams had predicted. Uh, the population um, enrollment uh, percentages uh, didn't shift as much as we had anticipated in that uh, projection. Uh, Charlton actually went up a little bit. So, um, you know, we'll, again, we'll take all those numbers into account when we uh, present the final, the uh, first pass of the budget. Any questions? And that concludes the Mr. Matthews report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item, consideration to authorize superintendent to submit a statement of interest to the Massachusetts School Building Authority. And do you want to speak to that first? Yeah, I'll, I'll just do a quick introduction. Um, with the February 16th deadline looming sort of like a vulture, uh, tonight I ask for the school committee's official approval to authorize me to submit a statement of interest to the Mass School Building Authority for the Accelerated Repair Program. As you all know, but for the benefit of others, uh, with the committee's official approval tonight, Mr. Chaplin and I will work together to submit a request for a new roof at Shepherd Hill 
and Mr. I'm sorry, Mrs. O'Coin has the official language that must be read into the minutes, and, and it's this quite is tedious. And for the motion. Yeah. Okay. Is that to be doing heritage at all? Are we going to do one other school? Are you going to do that now? No. no right now, we're looking we're just at just Shepherd Hill. Because you mentioned the other one at one time. At one time, we we talked about some of the other needs that are that are coming soon. Yeah, yeah uh, but you're just yeah. doing Shepherd Hill. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this will be our uh, legal motion. Resolved, having convened in an open meeting on Wednesday, January 24th, 2018, prior to the SOI submission closing date, the Dudley Charlton Regional School Committee of Dudley and Charlton, Massachusetts, in accordance with its charter bylaws and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit the Massachusetts School Building Authority, um, the Statement of Interest, form dated February 14, 2018, for Shepherd Hill Regional High School, located at 68 Dudley Oxford Road, Dudley, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and the priority category, for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. Priority five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems such as roofs, windows, boilers, heating and ventilation <coughs> systems to increase energy conservation and decrease energy-related costs in a school facility. The Shepherd Hill, Hill Regional High School roof is 25 years old and leaks are becoming more common. Additionally, it is not optimum to alternate energy sources such as solar panels. Available <laughs> renewable energy grants require roofs to be less than 10 years old. And hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting the statement of interest form, the Massachusetts school, um, I'm sorry, 10 years old, and hereby further specifically acknowledge that by submitting the statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority or commits the regional school district to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Um, do I have a motion on the floor? So moved. So, <laughs> second. Okay. Any more discussion on it? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries, it's unanimous. So we will be. Thank you. I think it's good that applying. at the very end of that, they mentioned that um, submission of the SOI doesn't commit them to giving us the funding. We didn't right. know, we didn't know <laughs> that. <laughs> And um, last item is consideration to approve agreement, agreement between the Dudley Charlton Regional School District and the Massachusetts Nurses Association. And um, at our last uh, executive session, we came to an agreement uh, with the nurses contract and the nurses did ratify it. So we have to formally now uh, approve it. And do you want to add anything else? No, me? just, you know, I just, uh, maybe I'll say that what I have to say after any votes are taken. Okay. So I will entertain a motion to approve the agreement uh, between the Dudley Charlton Regional School District and the Massachusetts Nurses Association. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion on it? Well, I'd just like to say we, we spend a lot of time on this. We wanted to recognize the good work the nurses do and we want to be fiscally responsible. I think we've reached a balance of the two things. We put a lot of work into this. This is, I brought this for effect. This is all the notes from this. <laughs> we'll be paperless in a few years, right, Mr. Desk? That was up there. 2020. <laughs> okay. But no, we try to recognize them, and they do a wonderful job, and we feel we've, we've reached a nice agreement between the two groups. Mm -hmm. Great. Anything else? Thank you, everyone. And I'll take a vote. All in favor? Motion carries, it's unanimous. So the nurses have an, uh, an agreement. Might I comment now? Yes. <laughs> I, I just want to say thank you to the first to the whole school committee for 
I don't know the number of hours we spent in executive session. It was pretty much every meeting for the last year, and I appreciate that. I know it's a lot of time away from your homes, and um, your input was valuable. But I would be remiss not to specifically thank Mrs. O'Coin and Mrs. Kabbalah, who I, I'm, I'm going to estimate the number of hours at 50-ish that we put into this thing and that you did. And, and look, this is our job. You're doing this as, as, com as a service to the community, and I, I really want to thank you for that. I, you know, I, I wish it could have gone more quickly, but I think in the end, as Mrs. Cabala said, it was a really, the product is really good. And thank you, um, Kathy, for proofreading, because that's her. <laughs> <laughs> and you did a great job on that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm quite certain there were weeks that you didn't want to see me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good to go to the team. Yeah. So, um, there were no questions, so we won't be going into executive session this evening. Uh, we That's just your put it on because. <laughs> <laughs> uh, isn't that sad? <laughs> so, our next meeting dates school committee meetings. Hopefully, I'll get these right. Wednesday, February 27th. Oops. Okay. Oops. Right off the bat. Right off the bat? Yeah. <laughs> you, you have the seventh there, but that's a special meeting on budget. Okay. Uh, I was going to read that. It's yep. in parentheses, yep. but I read the <laughs> title. <laughs> These are our school committee meetings. Okay, Wednesday, February 7th, will be a special meeting on budget, and that's going to start at 6.30. It will be at Shepherd Hill. Wednesday, February 4th, We'll be at Shepherd Hill at 7. 14. 14. <laughs> Sorry. Wednesday, February 14th, Shepherd Hill at 7 p.m. That's going to be our initial uh, budget that evening for fiscal 2019. Uh, Wednesday, February 28th, Charlton Middle School, and that will be at 7 p.m. Any additions? Okay. The bottom one's wrong. Right. The, she has the note, though. I got a note. I, I <laughs> checked that. <laughs> I checked that out, Kathy. <laughs> I, I um, crossed it off. <laughs> Budget and Finance Subcommittee, okay? And that is going to be Tuesday on January 30th, and that will be at 9 a.m., and it will be in the central office. Anything else? Any other additions? Okay. Future agenda items, FY 2019, budget presentation, and anybody for future agenda items? Anybody else? I'll have something on the warrant, uh, but I don't know if that will come under budget subcommittee or, or what, but I'll have um, some information about the, the warrant. warrant. Yeah, okay. The warrants. Any, any others? Well, I'm moment. sure we'll think of some. <laughs> okay. So I'll entertain a motion uh, to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? We're adjourned.